In March 2020, the first COVID-19 case was reported in South Africa and it changed our lives. For the first time in our history, the whole country was in lockdown. Journalists, considered essential workers to keep South Africans informed, had a new story to tell. They had to find new ways to tell it. She will notice that I am now wearing an N95 mask. I have a surgical gown, gloves, and as you can see there, my, my feet are covered. I felt like it's pushed me to the boundaries to tell stories in a different way. It's pushed me to get voices of people out that, that, that would otherwise be voiceless. So as much as it's been hor horrific, it's also been, um, it's been an eye-opener for me. COVID's changed everything. So that's just the reality. It's changed our personal lives, it's changed our professional lives, and it's changed reporting a lot. It's changed, it's changed some very basics and fundamentals of journalism. That, that connection that you often get with people when you're out in the field, where you're talking to people face to face without a mask inhibiting you, where you can see somebody's face uh, and you can really tell their emotions. Person. But now we've got masks and we've got visors. So it's changed everything. It's, it was just amazing to, for me to see, despite the, the risk of, of being infected, of going out, um, how people just stayed up, the newsroom, you know, everyone wants to be part of the story, everyone wants to be able to tell this. Every time they're out somewhere, there's a potential of being infected, and we have seen journalists being infected while on duty. We have seen journalists die. It's been a tough week for us here at ENCA. Cameraman Lungile Tom passed away, a victim of COVID-19. COVID-19 is a killer virus. I decided to make my status public because of the negative stigma attached to the virus. And that's where I went from being an individual worried about dying of a virus to journalism kicking in, saying to myself, actually use this to try to destigmatize COVID-19. But COVID-19 doesn't only present a physical and health challenge to the media. It also challenges its very existence. A strained financial situation before COVID-19 has now become an impending disaster. If we are not paying attention, COVID-19 could also um, signal the end of the media as well, because a lot of organizations are shutting down, journalists are doing so. We are actually the essential workers that no one pays attention to. We cannot afford to have the industry die. For a moment in our time, under all of the sadness, we come together and the light shines on a connection between the journalists of today, journalism of today, and that one great fine brand called Nat Nakasa, who in his time was doing the very same thing that the journalists of today are doing. I think journalists have shown immense bravery and resilience during this time of COVID-19. Um, and I think, you know, they are all deserving of the Nat Nakasa Award. of this bravery, the Nat Nakasa Prize is this year awarded to all journalists in South Africa. An award supported by Sanof's corporate partner, Sanlam. To every other journalist in this country who are continuing to brave um, danger heading out there every day to tell the story of South Africa. We say congratulations to all of you. We are proud of you. It may be tough. It is difficult. We have suffered some losses, but this is the time for us to be even stronger and to push forward and ensuring that we tell the story of South Africa. Well done.
Good evening, and it's, you've, ha you've just heard, rather, it has been a difficult 19 months for everyone in this room and, of course, everywhere else on the globe. We have had a lot to look back on as we introspect on the state of the journalism industry in South Africa. We have shed many tears as we bid a permanent farewell to our loved ones, to colleagues, and mourned the many losses that this beautiful country of ours continues to suffer. Tonight, we gather to reflect on the lows, to acknowledge the pain and trauma that we feel and have felt. Because this beloved country and this beloved industry of ours, which was already on its knees before the COVID-19 pandemic hit, has felt even more impact. What remains unshaken, though, is the resilient spirit that has characterized our profession since time in memoriam. That spirit remains in us because we stand on the shoulders of giants. Net Nakasa, the man under whose name we gather here tonight, is one such giant. As we transverse the emotional and material toil of our industry, Nakasa's commitment to the craft, despite You, this important work but tonight I implore you to give yourself a hug to share Bluetooth high fives <laughs> and just say we are still here and feel it yes. yes now share that Bluetooth high five if you don't know what it is we just simply go like that <laughs> with the person next to you and the person behind you and say we are still here moments such as tonight are rare to sit in the company of colleagues, of peers and associates, and celebrate, to celebrate the triumphs as we acknowledge the suffering. We will shine the light on the best among us and sprinkle even that light on the rest of the industry because as you have heard, we are all recipients of this Net Nagas Award because it has been tough and we have persevered. We will also go on to enjoy this evening and have the best time because it's important to acknowledge that it, it, as rough as it has been, we are humans and humans must still enjoy the lighter side of life. And moments such as these are exactly that. How often do you get to dress up? How often do you get out of those pajamas or those sweatpants and tracksuits, you know, and get off the screen to just come and have a beautiful evening and say that we are still who we believe ourselves to be. Ladies and gentlemen, we celebrate also because we know tomorrow is not promised, and we know that more so now than ever before. Welcome to the Net Nagasa Journalism Awards. My name is Teto Mashakwana, and as you know, these awards are brought to you by the South African National Editors Forum, sponsored for the past six years by a trusted supporter, Sanlam. Before we get into the festivities of the evening, just a reminder of a couple of housekeeping rules and some details on the socials. Our hashtags are NetNagasa2021 and hashtag SANEF. Please keep your masks on when and if it's possible to do so, but we do implore you to do, do keep your mask on as tough as it is. Remember to social distance where possible. There are sanitizing stations in a couple of areas outside. Please do use them and uh, wash your hands. Remember that quite important basic tenet of the, the pandemic. There's also an expo of previous winners just across the hall there at the museum, at the Trevor Huddleston Museum on site. And uh, you must go see it. I mean, I was telling Kwanita earlier that it must be just one of the most beautiful things to witness, that as much as we feel like a lot has been stuck, it just reminds you that actually a lot is still moving on and tonight is one of those. But for now, please welcome to the stage the South African National Editors Forum's chairperson, Zbungalwa, who is going to make us all feel at home. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Teto. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to tonight. 
Um, the one good thing about uh, these COVID times is that uh, events start and end on, in time. <laughs> yeah, as we all try to beat the curfew. And I'm sure our drink sponsor is quite uh, uh, happy to go back with a half-filled bar. <laughs> good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And um, it is lovely to see all of you here. Um, I know that most of us usually interact through virtual platforms. And I agree with the MC that it's actually nice to have that human touch to look a colleague in the eye and ask them how they are doing. I also welcome our colleagues and uh, friends who are joining us via the virtual platform. I hope you are raising your glasses wherever you are. Um, and thank you for being here. But colleagues, uh, on a poignant note, I think before I proceed, let me also take this uh, moment to express our condolences to the families of our colleagues in the industry who lost their lives due to COVID-19. And we also know that uh, some of our SANEF members actually have also lo lost their loved ones. And this also includes our member, Genevieve Quintal, who lost her mother, Talila, a few days ago. Uh, Talila is also the sister to our council member, uh, Angela Quintal. Also our chair of the Media Freedom Committee, Mary Papaya, could not be here tonight as uh, she lost her aunt. Ladies and gentlemen, you would have seen our statement from last night where we condemn the complicity of the Zimbabwe High Court in denying journalist Hopel Chinono the right to travel to South Africa to address this event. Incidentally, this event takes place at a time when we're shining the light on the safety of journalists and the tough conditions under which we work. The repressive regime of Zimbabwe has continued to frustrate Hopewell with the hope of silencing him. They may try, but they will not succeed. Hopewell may not be here in person, but his voice will not be silenced. The speech that he was meant to deliver at this podium will still be heard, albeit uh, via a virtual platform. As we said in our statement last night, colleagues, Journalism is not a crime, and journalists should not be persecuted and abused for practicing their craft. The continued harassment of Chinono by the Zimbabwean government underlines the harsh reality that journalists on our continent continue to be jailed, to be harassed, and in some instances, even killed for exposing human rights abuses and corruption in their countries. Tonight is also a sad reminder of the long road we still have to travel as journalists in this continent, given the fact that Hopewell Chinono is still being persecuted by his government in 2021. When we know that Net Nakasa and his generation faced similar hardships 50 years ago. But tonight, we are gathered to recognize media practitioners who have shown integrity, who have reported fearlessly despite the challenges and the hurdles that they've faced along the way, the way. Ladies and gentlemen, these are men and women like Net Nakasa who displayed their commitment to serve the people of South Africa. When the winners are announced tonight, I'm sure you'll agree with me that they are truly deserving of this accolade which recognizes brave and courageous journalism. Whenever we gather on a, like, on a night like tonight, we are all reminded of the unforgettable words that Ned uttered a few days before he passed. This is where he said, I can't laugh anymore, and when I cannot laugh, I cannot write. We know that writing was his life, and one can just imagine his state of mind as he said those words. I'm sure he had sunk into a dark hole of depression. And it is in that moment and it is actually that moment that reminds us, colleagues, that we are also human and we should take care of our health and also our, including our mental health. And that is why, as SANEF, this year we launched the Mental Health Support for Journalists in partnership with the South African Depression and Anxiety Group. We need to take care of ourselves. We need to respond, respond to our mental health needs and to provide support to our colleagues. The lockdown period 
has highlighted the dangerous conditions under which we work as journalists. I'm sure all of you saw just a few weeks ago, during the unrest that engulfed uh, KwaZulu-Natal and some parts of Gauteng, we saw journalists coming under attack. In one instance, a bullet was fired through the door of a marked media car in Gandla. Journalists were openly harassed, and an SABC journalist, Samkele Maseko, was visually assaulted by a supporter of our former president. And over the same period, sadly, we also had as many as five community radio stations suffer extensive damage to their studios, where they lost equipment and had their studios vandalized. We know that these stations are of great service to their, continue, to their communities. The thugs who temporarily took them off air were trying to deny those communities a voice, but were encouraged by South Africans and the spirit of South Africans who rallied around them and made sure that they continue to be on air. In the near way, we said, not in our, on our watch. You will not silence these stations. <laughs> and we also do hope, ladies and gentlemen, that the police do find uh, those culprits so that they can send a message that uh, the media is not to be messed with. Over the past year, we have had a number of incidents where journalists were harassed by the police, actually, while doing their jobs. And we continue to call on organizations, on political parties and civil society organizations to speak out against attack on journalists. We know that these are all attempts to silence us and to stop us from doing our jobs. And that is why it is important that as we continue to do our jobs, we also take care of ourselves. No, more, no longer can we say we are tough and laugh off um, incidents of trauma as we often do as journalists because we believe ourselves to be tough. So I call on you, ladies and gentlemen, to use the SADEC service. It's free of charge. There's an uh, SMS line for journalists to use that service, uh, ment that mental health support service, and also to encourage your newsrooms to do so. And uh, on behalf of the management committee and the council of the South African National Editors Forum, I'd like to thank our award sponsors, uh, Sanlam, who have been our trusted partner for the past six years. We value your partnership, and we hope that you continue to support free and independent media in South Africa. We'd also like to acknowledge and welcome the Nakasa family who are here tonight, represented by Uput Tami Nakasa. We say thank you, and we welcome you, and thank you for continuing to support our endeavors to make sure that Net Nagasa's loud and thunderous voice continues to be heard, inspiring generations to come. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with those few words, I welcome you to the 23rd edition of the Net Nagasa Awards, and we hope that you will have an enjoyable night. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Chairperson, for the reminder that, of course, as we put our lives on, on hold to serve this beautiful country that we love, we must also take care of ourselves. The, the point he raises about our mental health is one that has been just under the carpet for a long time, and I am so grateful that Sanev has taken it upon itself to make sure that it is up on the agenda and not only verbally and not only through campaigns that do not lead to results, but through proper access to channels that can actually help us. And that is commendable. Now, I'd like to take this opportunity to invite onto the stage the sponsor that we all appreciate so much, Sanlam. And uh, I invite Sanlam's communications manager, Ali Milazi, to come and give us a word. Thank you, MC. Oh, sorry. Speak to the mic. Thank you, MC. Good evening, everybody. Um, 
I'd like to start off by saying uh, Sydney Mbele, our group executive for brand, uh, was supposed to be with us. Uh, we woke up to news this morning that he wasn't feeling too well, so just as a precaution, he said, you know, rather stay away and um, pretty much put me in the hot seat. But I'm glad to be here. Uh, we've been friends with Sana for, you know, quite a while, for the past six years, and uh, we really, really, really enjoy the work that we're doing with them. The message from Sydney and from Sunlam, uh, it's really one around collaboration and working together uh, with Sanef in terms of um, promoting the importance of media freedom, um, but also doing what we can to support in terms of the welfare and well-being of journalists. Now, Net Nakasa, whom we've all you know, admired and heard, and the chairperson of Sanef right now just shared, I think, a very beautiful tribute and uh, memory to, in his name, um, was obviously a very important journalist in the history of South Africa. Um, he really brought about um, light, or shown the light rather, on important issues during apartheid South Africa. And that has served to be an inspiration and a motivation, I think, for this generation of journalists. And as Sanlam, I think we recognize the importance of that. We recognize the importance of having the space, you know, creating those spaces where journalism thrives, where journalism contributes to information flows, where journalism um, also um, helps keep civil society, business, and labor to account. Um, now, the chairman of SANAF also talked about you know, the many disturbing um, instances that we saw over the looting um, in South Africa. And I think SANLAM shares the same sentiment. Uh, when we saw these disturbing images and news, it was obviously very, very disturbing. And um, it's something that we would like to obviously work with uh, SANEF in terms of looking at ways to create, you know, interesting safe spaces for journalists to, you know, operate. Because without journalism, without robust journalism, um, society can neglect and sort of lose its focus. So the chairman mentioned the instances in uh, KwaZulu Natal, um, you know, where journalists were being attacked. Um, I think for me, the most touching uh, aspect was really the destruction of community radio stations across the country. We know that community radio stations play a very important role um, at the grassroots level in sharing the news um, to their communities. And in fact, one of the interesting things that we're looking to do as Sanlam is perhaps work with community radio stations and also the African lang uh, language stations around bringing financial news to the community because financial news is a very, very complex um, issue and the people at the grassroots level perhaps don't have the same access. And, 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 and understanding in terms of the complex financial and economic news that impacts their work. So that's one of the areas that we're looking to you know, look at. Um, we've worked with uh, SANA for the past six, seven years. I think it's been a very great uh, relationship. We're hoping to expand and look at other areas of, as I've alluded to. We also have a rich tradition of supporting uh, journalism in the country not only in the country, but also across the continent. Um, and actually, in the next coming weeks, we'll be embarking on some of our major programs that we normally host during the second half of the year. We've just um, actually entered into a collaboration with the sister organization of um, SANEF, the Africa Editors Forum, whereby we'll be looking to promote um, debate and discussion around topical issues impacting journalists. You would know that in May this year, um, the African uh, uh, Editors Forum, under the auspices of UNESCO, actually hosted the 30th anniversary of the World Press Day. And one of the things that um, TAIEF plans to do is to have a debate around that um, and actually come up with action points um, that they can share with journalists across the con uh, con uh, continent. And Sanlam were involved in that in terms of pr providing a space for the webinars to take place, but also collaborating with them in terms of what sort of you know, tangible 
um, um, either guide or booklet can come out, you know, for the benefit of journalists, um, particularly around um, Africa. The other initiative that we are uh, quite, quite, quite passionate and uh, proud of is our um, Journalism Awards, the Salam uh, Financial Journalism Awards, which have been around now for more than 40 years. We're actually approaching our 46th year uh, this year. So um, that will be happening around October, knock on wood. Hopefully COVID won't make us change the date into later into December where everybody will be in festive and forget about the importance of journalism and news reporting. And then the other one that we're also quite passionate about is the summer school. We host a summer school every year around the first, second week of November. And it basically teaches journalists from all over Africa um, the basics around financial journalism, something that we're very proud of. Um, and we're looking to expand more and more into it um, because obviously on the one hand, it mirrors our footprint across Africa, but we also know that in Africa, there are lots of challenges in terms of reporting around trade issues, economic issues, you know, and so forth. For the most part, the news lens in Africa tends to be mainly political. Um, so we're trying to do our bit in terms of promoting financial journalism coverage across the continent. Now, just to uh, conclude, um, I'd like to say congratulations to all the finalists. I think the fact that they were in the running speaks to their dedication, obviously, and their commitment to robust journalism. I think it's important that they continue to do that. I'd also like to say a special mention to the community radio station representatives that I believe are here. Um, we would definitely like to urge you to continue the work that you're doing. Do not despair. Uh, I think the work that you're doing is very important, and Sanlam would definitely, definitely cheer you know that on. And then I'd like to leave you with an uh, interesting, powerful quote. To those of you that uh, follow American journalism in particular would perhaps know this personality that I'm about to quote. His name is uh, Walter Cronkite. He was a American broadcaster, very prominent in the 50s, 60s, and he said something, I think, that has a very enduring um, sort of sentiment, not only for American journalism, but I think, you know, journalism as a whole around the world. And he said, freedom of the press is not just important to democracy, it is democracy. I thank you and enjoy the evening. Freedom of the press is democracy itself, because how else do you guard that democracy if you cannot have a transparent view of everything else that happens? And that brings me to the introduction of the awarding ceremony where we will be celebrating, like we said, the best among us. But before we go further, we'd like to pause and of course acknowledge those five radio stations that everyone has been referring to. This year, we are privileged to have in our midst some representatives of the five radio stations who have shown determination and bravery in serving their communities. Some were also sadly affected by the July violence in Gauteng and Guazulu Natal, as you have heard. To hand over these awards, please welcome to the stage the South African National Editors Forum's Secretary General, Mashatze Mashase, for the prize handover. This year's recipients of prizes which have been awarded from the Sign of Media Relief Fund. I think that deserves a round of applause. Because as you know, there's always questions about what really is the role of Sign of. Those of you wondering, this is one of them. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please help me acknowledge Alex FM in his absence uh, to, uh, of course, receive this award. And I think uh, we'll just have it on standby for when one of them is ready to come and get it, and they are not here with us tonight, but Alex FM is one of the recipients. <laughs> However, a representative from Intokozo FM is here, all the way from KZN, I believe, and we'd like to welcome them to the stage. It's 
quite a, a lot of, of awards because it's, it's a great time to celebrate more than just the ordinary awardees. And as they conclude that, I would like to invite, thank you so much, I would like to invite onto the stage a representative of CASI FM to come and receive this award as one of the awardees. And finally, the Westside FM 98.9. They are not here tonight, I believe, but we will receive that award on their behalf. So as you all know, there was an era in this country when community radio stations represented the foundation of a lot of careers. And at this particular time in our lives, there are journalists who are in fact choosing to work at community radio stations. And that choice is influenced by their witnessing, of course, of the impact and the importance of that work that is being done at that level. Because it's not just about grassroots anymore, it's about education. And as we heard the gentleman from Sanlam say, it's, it's about also educating beyond just the politics, beyond just what happens on their streets, but also bringing financial education, which we hope will be realized soon to our communities, which is very much needed. However, please join me as we introduce this following award, which is one of the most exciting points of the night for a lot of us, and that is the Stephen Rotisley Award. The moment is exciting for me and for a lot of you in this room who know this recipient, we have watched her as she grew and her star continued to shine. And this is a formidable woman in the South African journalism industry. To hand over this award, please welcome back to the stage the son of chairperson, Sbungalwa. <laughs> And it is my pleasure to announce the 2021 recipient of the Stephen Rottersley Award. And it is none other than my editor in chief and your SG, Machase Machase. <laughs> Now, between 2016 and 2020, Masazi Masase served as chairperson of SANEF. Before that, she was the Gauteng convener. And in 2020, she again offered her service as the Secretary General of SANEF. Seldom in the history of SANEF has there been a more hardworking and dedicated chairperson. Masase embodies what SANEF stands for an unwavering passion for media freedom, and a deep commitment to make South Africa a better and more equal place for its citizens through journalism. When she became chairperson in 2016, Sanef was on the brink of bankruptcy. Through her efforts, energy, and passion, she ignited her management committee and the incumbent office to steer this organization we love and treasure so much to financial and organizational stability. Her term has secured the future of SANEF for at least another decade. I think that deserves an applause. <laughs> Despite being battered, denigrated, yeah. insulted on social media and in public, it still happens, happens Machate has led SANEF in its principal campaign against prevailing hate speech and online abuse against journalism and journalists. She championed SANEF's activism to push back against the abuse, in particularly of women journalists, by politicians and online trolls. Her term as chairperson saw high-level engagements with the presidency being prioritized, and she lobbied tirelessly for greater transparency from the country's highest office. 
with unparalleled passion, no SANEF task is too big or too small for Mashadzi. She pushes SANEF to be better every day, to react quicker and more effectively when journalists' freedoms are threatened and being attacked. And she leads with compassion when our fraternity experiences loss. She is a deserving recipient of the Stephen Rottersley Award. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I did mention that this moment is very special for a lot of us. <laughs> yes, yeah, they are vaccinated. They are the breadwinners of the country, as they call themselves. <laughs> Thank you so much, and congratulations, Matati. Now, we are, of course, entering a very important moment tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this, of course, is the keynote address. Every year, the Net Nagasa Awards invites a keynote speaker who helps us reflect on the conditions of our time. This time around, we are honored to be addressed by renowned Zimbabwean journalist, Hopel Chinono. Hopel's work has no borders. Yet, the government of his country is continuously seeking to enclave his mind and his person. Hopel's work speaks for itself. Just last night, the Zimbabwean government and the Zimbabwean High Court failed to make a ruling on his application to have his passport returned to him after he was arrested several times for telling the stories of his people independently and without fear. However, technology has come to our aid and rescue. And I am pleased to introduce a virtual address by Hopewell Chinono. I'm deeply humbled to be here with you tonight, and more importantly, to have received the invitation to speak before you. There is no greater recognition for any professional than the one which comes from your own professional peers. It is even more so when the recognition is coming from your neighbors and from a highly esteemed institution like the South African National Editors Forum. It is deeply painful that the road traveled by our brother colleague, Nat Nakasa, is still being traveled by many journalists across the continent, including myself in my own home country of Zimbabwe. We should have been reading about Nat Nakasa's difficult journey as a historical subject, which doesn't apply to today's lived realities. Unfortunately, this history keeps repeating itself on the African continent. The cruelest aspect of this repeated history is that Nat Nakasa was a victim of apartheid, a crude yet legalized form of racist oppression. Yet today, Hundreds, if not thousands, of journalists are subjected to the same environment of legalized political persecution by black governments that were meant to put an end to these state-sponsored indignities. Just like under the apartheid regime, today we have many African journalists who are victimized by their own governments using legalized trumped-up charges, the favorite ones being incitement and libel. I have failed to be here with you tonight in person after Sanef wrote a letter to the Zimbabwean High Court for my passport to be released. I have two trumped up criminal charges hanging over my head. I say this to demonstrate the fact that just like under apartheid, many African governments continue to use lawfare through captured judiciaries and state institutions like the police and intelligence services to fight robust journalism. At the heart of apartheid was white supremacy and a legalized looting spree by a few, whilst the majority wallowed in abject poverty without access to decent education and service delivery or decent or fair opportunities to life. Today, African journalists are being persecuted for exposing the looting of public funds and the plunder of Africa's natural resources by a minority, but this time the looters are black political elites and their surrogates. The biggest hospital in Zimbabwe, Salim Gabe Hospital, has only two maternity theaters which were built by the colonial regime in 1977. Only one of them is working today. 2,500 Zimbabwean women die giving birth every year in Zimbabwe. That is the equivalent of 15 jumbo jets crashing annually and killing only pregnant Zimbabwean women. The main ingredient to this tragedy is the looting of public funds and the plan of Zimbabwe's natural resources. 100 million US dollars worth of gold is smuggled every month out of Zimbabwe by ZANU-PF elites and their surrogates. To put this into perspective, 
all of Zimbabwe central hospitals only require 50 million US dollars to run smoothly. Their two-year budget is being looted monthly, and the ruling elites blame sanctions for a broken public health system. Like Nat Nakasa, many Zimbabweans have been forced to leave their own country of birth, running away from the intolerable harsh realities of life, including political persecution. 55 years after Nat Nakasa's tragic and painful death, he would be upset to know that his fight against oppression has remained a fleeting illusion to be pursued, but not yet attained in many parts of the continent. Nat Nakasa would be upset to know that black African governments are persecuting black journalists who are merely doing their professional work. You would be shocked to hear that Zimbabwe, which was the first country together with Nigeria to have television in sub-Saharan Africa, is still the only country of any significance in Africa that has only one television station, which is state-owned. Nigeria now has over 115 television stations. Zimbabwe remains stuck in the 1960s. My invitation to speak here tonight is also a testimony to South Africa's strong presence of a free press. In my country, there are many institutions which are afraid to be associated with me for fear of being labeled anti-government and losing government contracts and or being harassed. Many prominent Zimbabweans invite me into their homes, yet they are afraid for anyone else to know that I was in their home for dinner. The very same painful experiences that Nat and his generation went through. My invitation to be here tonight is a powerful statement by South African journalism to the world that whilst we continue to be politically persecuted for doing our work by rogue regimes, colleagues here stand with us in solidarity. I'm quite aware that my presence here tonight is not just about myself as an individual. I am representing many journalists across the continent who are under persecution. Your invitation was not just for me, but for all journalists who are persevering under terrible conditions like what Nat Nakasa went through, and it serves as a beacon of hope for all of them, including myself. May Nat Nakasa's soul rest in peace. Thank you. And just as Hopel said, there are a lot of conditions, of course, that we truly would have hoped that in 2021 would not be our reality. And he uses the word upset. He says, Net Nakasa would have been upset. I think he would have been enraged to believe that the supposed democracies impose on their people and journalists the kind of harsh conditions that are being imposed. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings me to our next award, and that is the Net Nagasa Award in Community Media. To hand over this award, of course, please welcome to the stage Peter Sullivan. The Net Nagasa Award in Community Media goes to two individuals for their work in the community news agency Ground Up. Since 2018, this small community news agency has persisted with a series of investigations into the NLC that have uncovered corruption, maladministration, and nepotism. The news agency's work in general and its reporting on the lottery sc scandal in particular provides a sterling example of good community journalism in action. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage this year's winners of the Net Nakasa Award in Community Media, Grand Ops Nathan Griffin and founding editor Raymond Joseph. Person, Anton Pansail. Come, come, can um, 
There's a third person, Anton van Zayl from Zotnet, who's been very much part of this team. And I really would like to acknowledge him. This is Ward's as much as his, as ours. Thank you. Congratulations to our recipients of the Net Nagasa Award in Community Media. That leads me, of course, to a video, of course, of our judges expressing why it is that these awards are being rewarded to the individuals that are going to. Have a look. This is not an award for people who just do their job. Most journalists are courageous. Most journalists defy convention and defy people who tell them what they must do. But this is an award for that one special person or people in a year that we're able to say, that was special. We'd like to reward you. We would like to recognize what you're doing. So um, what we looking for and which is a big issue is you know really um showing a commitment to the south african public and that means the public as a whole you know from the gogo -go in soweto to the auntie in mitchell's plane to of course the executive sitting in santon um, i think um, another issue that we look for is of course um that um he or she or they resisted um censorship also um really shown courage to ensure um, that South Africans are able to access information. And then I think, you know, given the challenges that the media environment as a whole face, whether it's radio, TV or print, really trying to keep the publication or entity afloat during this tough times. And we know, of course, particularly 2020 and 2021 have not been easy for any um, news outlet trying just to keep, you know, the, the head above water and paying salaries to, to journalists. A courage is a definable thing, and yet somehow it's not that easily defined. It really means doing what is right, despite people trying to stop you from doing what is right. It is, it is showing that you know that this is the right thing to do, and then doing it. And it comes from people in times of crisis, it comes from people who are being threatened, and it also comes from creating journalism, good journalism. It comes from reporters in the field, it comes from editors deciding to publish things that a lot of people don't want them to publish. It comes from starting a publication, or keeping a publication going in these very, very difficult times. We all know that journalism is under threat, that social media to some extent have taken over a lot of what journalism was and to be able to publish now and keep publishing that's also a kind of courage new type of courage also requires the ability to withstand cyber bullying um, we've got some politicians who use um, trolls to go and um, threaten journalists and they send them emails, they send them WhatsApp messages, they send them Twitter messages. So the range of threat has widened rather than uh, thinned out. The threats today are not as violent as the threats um, in the 70s and the 60s, where you would be jailed, uh, where your publication would just get shut down because the minister was against what you wrote. Um, so those were much more brutal and more jet-put than today's um, uh, threats, but the threats continue. Um, of course, it was a different era for Nat. I mean, he had to fight the, the apartheid government and just trying to be a reporter and a black reporter for his time. You know, he had to show courage standing up to the apartheid forces, the apartheid police, etc. And so, yes, it's years later, but I think, you know, being courageous, I think in the current context is around, you know, telling that story of... Um, the grandmother whose children died of HIV AIDS or even now COVID um, and trying to put food on the table for her grandchildren and 
perhaps a young niece who ended up looting in Soweto or in KwaZulu Natal because of wanting to put food on the table. But today has... we have the Zondo Commission into corruption as a result of work by journalists. They faithfully and patiently unraveled the uh, Gupta uh, conspiracy. They exposed the Zuma government for what it did. And it is only now that it's coming out into the open in the Zondo Commission. So we have absolutely no reason to fault our journalism today. It's of very high quality. We were a bit disappointed um, that we didn't get that many um, nominees. Um, and I think, I, I think I often think for myself, I mean, you know, for a lot of journalists, you know, you get so busy, you are so tied out to the day-to-day -day roller coaster of the realities of South Africa, the reality of reporting, and just keeping your head out up above water. Journalists, you know, just, I mean, I think there's very few that actually apply. Um, and so in this case, you obviously have to be nominated. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, I was hoping for more, to be very honest. Yeah, so for me, I think we were a bit disappointed. We were hoping for a more variety of, um, you know, nominees. But again, you know, you have to be nominated by someone. Um, mm -hmm. And so perhaps I think we will, for 2021, 22, we will um, really, you know, endeavor to ensure that we advertise, and which we do, you know, we advertise on different platforms and we really try to, you know, have an outreach. And so perhaps, I don't know, we might have to go to individual newsrooms, et cetera, because then you find, one person nominating X number of people in mm -hmm. one medium. Thanks to, to our judges, of course, for that video that outlines why it is that the process is what it is and the people who do receive the awards do end up receiving them. And finally, we arrive at the moment many of you have been waiting for. And I don't mean the dinner that is about to be served, nor the bar that is as much an institution to our industry as a bike is to a messenger. The Net Nagasa Courageous Journalism Award is this particular award I'm talking about. To hand over this award, please welcome to the stage in Dr. George Tolle. How do you find creative and innovative ways of sustaining publications when Google and Facebook eat a slice of the dwindling advertising cake? How do you continue to show integrity and report fearlessly? Uphold your commitment to serve the people of South Africa. Ensure that despite insurmountable obstacles, you are able to resist censorship. And then also show courage in making information available to everyone. Sounds almost impossible in this day and age. But there were, these were the ethos that Nat Nagasa stood for and what the award recognizes and continues to celebrate since its inception. With COVID-19 continuously causing havoc for many in our country, it has also brought about and brought to the fore the deep inequalities that society suffers from, and that the fact that it is not yet Uhuru for many. One of the key watchdogs, the media, has been key in unpacking and analyzing the events in our country. The media was, however, not spared from the challenges, from losing colleagues to COVID, publications and media houses folding, colleagues facing retrenchments. The year has fundamentally changed what we do and how we practice our craft. In 2017, when the Gupta leaks were brought to several publications, we never thought of what happened behind the scenes. Who ensured that the whistleblowers were safe and their identity remained confidential? The whistleblowers not only faced life-threatening circumstances, but they left behind their livelihoods and loved ones and needed urgent help. The Net Nagasa Award 2021 goes to Stili Karalumbas. The CEO, <laughs> C 
Stili is the CEO and founder of Daily Maverick. Since its inception, the Daily Maverick has become one of the leading online and print publications in South Africa, in part because of the commitment and passion of this former accountant. Stili says he's now fully reformed and is committed and passionate about the media business. And amongst his greatest achievements are the 100 plus payroll successfully concluded at Daily Maverick, although he admits he no longer keeps count. Comrades, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, please stand and help me celebrate the awarding of this game changer in our industry. Thank you, Ntate Joe. Stili, could you please just come and give us a few words? Wow, thank you, everyone. This is, let me raise that up. Thank you. This is really unexpected. Um, yeah, I, wa I want to thank Sanef um, for the work that they do and Sanam for sponsoring tonight and all the other work that um, they do with Sanef. Um, this is, as I said, an unexpected uh, award. Um, I want to thank, I think everyone in this room understands uh, the challenges of this industry and, and what we have to go through and the sacrifices of what we have to do. But behind that, um, our partners also have to put up with a lot and they understand the perils and the demands of what it takes to be in this industry. So I want to thank um, all of those people and especially my wife um, who's had to endure 12 years of this. And, <laughs> and putting up with those 141 payrolls, I, I counted again, 100, 141 payrolls. We're coming up for that now. Um, it really has been um, an incredibly challenging 12 years to do this with. And then also to thank um, my other partner, uh, Branko, whose fault this all is, um, for giving me this opportunity to test everything that I have and know and to grow even more into doing that and to be able to to work with this amazing team the opportunity to work with such dedicated and passionate people who 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 go to work every day with such a a clear and impressive mission um, to provide this public service journalism that we do and to all our colleagues in this industry uh, who do so every day everyone is is worthy of this award um, and to our colleagues in, in, in Africa and Zimbabwe and Ethiopia who are facing persecution uh, and incarceration or worse, um, journalism is not a crime. It is our, is our, 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 biggest, um, our biggest fight against crime. And so we must support it where we can. And so the fact that we have an industry in South Africa that is still relatively free, we must be grateful for and keep fighting for. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. That's very tall. Can we please get another round of applause for Steely and the Daily Maverick team? I think we, we all agree. We, I think we, we, no, I don't actually think. I know that we all agree that the Daily Maverick has been a positive game changer in the South African media and journalism landscape. And we all know that without it, a lot of information would not have become public as we have seen them continue the sterling work that they, they do. And this, of course, is that time of the evening when my task comes to an end, as I leave you in the capable hands of our newly awarded SG, Mahlaze Mahlaze, who will conclude this evening's festivities Thank you for being such gracious attendees. And from me, Teto Mashakwana, that's a wrap.
excitement of the night has has gone over. She's supposed to thank us all and conclude and uh, and tell us what we are going to do after this point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, now this, this is what this organization does. Um, of course, I will now hand over to my slides for our vote of thanks. Good evening, uh, comrades. Uh, thank you very, very much for spending this evening with us. We know that it's been a difficult, difficult time for all of us, but we are really, truly appreciative that we could spend the time and be here to honor all of these courageous journalists that make sure that our country is in check and continuously make sure that we ask the right question, questions and we expose all that others would rather have hidden, all because we love our country. To all our winners, congratulations, and please stay strong and continue doing the work. I know also, Nathan, and uh, your team as well, you faced a lot of abuse <laughs> from the lotteries, and you have persevered, and I know that it's always difficult, but we are inspired, and that's what tonight is all about. It's about inspiring us, and Styli, we hope that you continue inspiring other uh, media owners so that we find creative ways to make sure that journalism lives, journalism thrives so that our democracy can continue standing. So congratulations again to all of the winners. <laughs> to our partner, Sunlam, we are truly grateful that every year we don't even have to worry. We don't even have to beg because you are always saying that we are here to help. And you have really uh, led the way in saying that corporate South Africa has a role to play in making sure that the media has the support. And we are always encouraged that you continue to challenge your colleagues in the industry to say, how much more can you actually do to make sure that this industry survives so that we can have the businesses succeed and the businesses enjoy the profits that they do, but they have to continuously give back. And part of that giving back is to make sure that the industry is supported. So thank you very, very much to Sanlam. <laughs> to our chairperson, thank you very much for continuing to lead us. Um, some people use this phrase very loosely, we are led. But here at SANEF, <laughs> we can say without a doubt that we are truly led. So thank you very much for continuing to lead us. And also to our colleagues in the management committee, thank you very much for continuing to support and give of your time to SANEF and also to our council members. And we continue to say to all of uh, the senior journalists, and some of them are looking at me, so, um, this is not just an editor's forum, it is also extended to senior reporters. We hope to see you at our next council meeting, actually, uh, and not just when we celebrate. So this is your organization. Uh, think the likes of Quanita are now part of us, and thank you very much, Quanita. Can you please lead your people? <laughs> I also want to take this opportunity to thank the office. Um, those who don't know, we have a new executive uh, director, Reggie Mualusi. Uh, Reggie, Hopewell, and Zuzi have done an amazing job to make sure that we actually uh, enjoy tonight. Thank you for your commitment, and we know that like newsrooms, SANEF is also a 24-hour job. Thank you very much. Our partners tonight in putting all of this together has been Buzz Publicity. I'm sure many of you uh, have been very familiar with Bridget and her team, uh, but thank you very much for making sure that we are able to enjoy this night and uh, for taking all of our pain points and listening to all of us and as we complain and complain and complain, but thank you very much for delivering such a beautiful night. So everyone uh, who is watching us virtually, we know that you are with us in spirit and we are really, really praying and hoping that next year we will still be able to gather again and enjoy and celebrate journalism and especially courageous journalism. To the Nakasa family, 
thank you very much. As our chair has said, we are grateful that you continue to lend this great man to us so that we can shine the light on courageous journalism. We are really, really grateful. I'm hoping I have not forgotten anyone. Um, I'm our judges. Our judges, our judges, how can I? Uh, thank you, thank you very, very much for going through the work and finding um, the germs and getting us to celebrate. We are really, really, truly grateful. One of the things that I have appreciated being in, uh, at uh, SANEF is that, you know, we have, you know, we have... Um, a depository of wisdom that we can always tap into. So thank you very much to all of you for continuing to be with us and supporting SANEF and just making sure that this organization lives and thrives. So thank you very much. I think that is the last of the thank yous. I'm now going to say thank you very much to our Master of Ceremony, Teto Matlakwana. You know, literally, it was not even anything. I was like, you know, we're looking for an MC for the son, uh, for the son of Net Nakasa Awards. And she was like, if you don't mind, I can do it. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, um, we are really, really, truly grateful, uh, Tedo, for giving of your time. We are really appreciative of it. And thank you very much for leading us so spectacularly. I know I have a gift for you, but I will give it to you later. <laughs> but uh, for now, we are not done yet. Uh, the place does close at 9 o'clock, but they will be serving us dinner. And Diageo, thank you very much. How can I forget you for all of the drinks? Thank you, thank you to all SAB as well, our partners. We are truly, truly grateful for all of the support. I'm really hoping there's no one that I've forgotten. If I have, I will come back to stage to say, Thank you, thank you. But everybody, let's enjoy the evening, keep safe, and let's stay positive. Thank you. Before we, we get happy and we mingle and we go to the bar, uh, I'd just like to invite the recipients of tonight's awards to the stage, along with Mashazi and Sbu and Ndate Peter and Ndate Joe. Oh, for a photo op, that is. Everybody else, go have fun.